Hey everyone, it is Jake from Sailing Momentum. I am gonna to talk to you today about five things that we do to avoid piracy. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. We hope you like this video and please subscribe. All right, now everybody knows pirates are not what they used to be. We're not even gonna get into that. It's not Johnny Depp stealing your wife and taking off with all your stuff. That's not what we're talking about. And usually it's just any kind of theft that happens on the seas. And we're not talking about a lot of violent stuff here. We're mostly just talking about theft and keeping your valuables and your loved ones safe while on board. This is not meant to deter anybody from sailing. If you want to go sailing and you have any specific concerns or questions, let us know. We reach out to everybody who asks. We really don't feel this on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not something that terrifies us or scares us. We barely even think about it anymore. But there are just some basic precautions that we take in order to keep ourselves safe. And some of them we have learned since we've been out here by experience. <laughs> So number five. Number five is basic. It's super easy. It's the number one thing that you should do anytime you're worried about theft or thievery or being robbed or something violent, lock your stuff. Seriously, like, lock your dink. I'm gonna use the word dink a lot. Dink is basically your inflatable. It's one of the most common things that are lost while sailing. A lot of people are like, oh, pirates stole my dink. Well, really? I mean, you've been sailing like a week and you lost your dink, you probably just didn't tie it up correctly. But if you do this, you won't have that problem. Lock your stuff. Put a lock around it. We have a stainless steel chain that we use on Momentum's dink, and it is pretty good sized chain, probably at least a half an inch. It has fire hose over it so that it doesn't chafe the dink, and it makes it really hard to, to cut. And then it goes to a pretty hefty lock. Use this, put it around everything. If you go somewhere and you think, oh, I don't need to tie it up, it's safe, just lock the darn thing. It only takes an extra few minutes. It sucks. Now, also lock your boat, lock your hatches. Like that's common sense. If somebody's gonna get on board your boat and your hatch is wide open, or somebody's gonna come in your catamaran with all of its space and its sliding glass door, they're just gonna slide that door open and walk right inside. And you're never even going to know because you're down in your deep holes with all their room and five million bathtubs down there in your spa room. You're not going to hear them walk through their sliding glass door. Now on a monohole, you might hear them come down the steps or banging on the hatch, you know. But if you just lock the darn door, it's going to make it hard for them to get in and you're probably going to wake up, hopefully, before they come inside and steal all the electronics off your table which we hear about every once in a while. Yeah, that does happen if you leave your boat unlocked. So don't leave your boat unlocked. That's all I'm gonna say. Number, number four, don't advertise. When we go to shore, we don't tell people where we're at or what boat we're on, what it looks like. Because as soon as they know that you're on shore and they know that you just came out of your dink, anytime they see your dink, they can assume there's nobody on board or there's only one or two people on board. So just don't tell people what boat you're on unless you know them, that's that's a different story. And 99% and of people when you go to a new place in one of these islands down here in the Caribbean, it is amazing. Like everybody's so nice. It, it, this isn't made to paint a picture of everybody's out to get you, it's really not that way. Also don't be on the VHF talking about every little detail and where you're going and what you're doing. If you got some friends and you're gonna go plan a night out, use Facebook or use something else call them on the phone, you know, leave the radio. Everybody's listening to that. And I'm not trying to be some paranoid freak, but if you're on the VHF saying, hey, let's all meet up and go to shore and go to the zoo, and then they just have to watch and go, okay, they're gone. You now, sometimes if we are feeling sketchy about a certain individual who's asking us what we're doing, because you'll get approached by people, and, and it's different cultures, so you're not always going to know when somebody's just being a normal person or when they're being a little bit weird, but sometimes you get a vibe. So you just, in those situations, we'll give false information. We'll just tell them that we're on another boat, unsheltered or something. Just kidding, guys. 
don't go on unsheltered, you'll die. We we'll just tell them false information. Say, oh yeah, we're on a blue boat out there, and there's no blue boats, and you know, whatever. Number three. Now this is a big one. This one caught us, and this was the one that we we didn't even think about until we had a situation. And it is buddy boats. Now it's great to go out and sail by yourself to a bay and, and have it all to yourself and it's peaceful and tranquil and that's great. And yeah, there's certain bays where that's totally fine to do. But there's other bays where you just don't want to do that. And even if you have a buddy boat, you need to leave your VHF on. You got to be able to communicate to each other because you're there for the other person. It's just like diving or swimming or whatever. You're their buddy boat. Now some bays are more dangerous than others and if you go into an, a remote anchorage by yourself and something happens, you are on your own. Quick story. Well, we were sailing up off an island and I won't say which one because islanders love, I mean, people love their islands and I don't want to say anything negative about any particular one. But, um, and this situation may not have even been as bad as it felt like it was, but it's an example of how things can be stressful. So we were on an anchorage and we were with three or four other boats that we knew. We were all having a great time. And everybody left and we said, you know, we love this anchorage so much, we're just gonna stay one more day. And so everybody else left and we and we stayed behind. Because I was like, nah, we're good, we, we, it's fine, we love it here. I'm not leaving with everybody else, I'm not ready. Well, they all left and then it got dark and everything started to change. We realized we're the only boat in the anchorage. All the other boats left, all of our friends, and all the other boats that we didn't even know. So even though we thought we were going to have other boats with us, because we, they weren't our buddy boats, they went bye-bye. Anyways, so we were on anchor all by ourselves, late at night in a bay, eating dinner, having a good time, and all of a sudden we heard this voice. And I get up on deck, and there's somebody off the boat, 20 feet off my port side. And I look out into the darkness, and all I can see is a shadow and a voice. There's no moon. There's nothing, there's just some lights from our boat and a couple on shore that are barely lighting out this figure. I don't know if he's armed, I don't know what the situation is. He's yelling at me to help him come fix his engine. I'm glad to help, but I'm not gonna leave my family on board the boat. I don't know who this guy is. I can't see him, so if he has a weapon or anything on board, it just puts me in a very vulnerable position and situation. It could have been all well and good, but the stress of the whole situation ruined the entire trip and it eventually took care of the situation and and uh, but when i called the coast guard to like let other people know nobody answered you know and and then you realize if somebody wanted to come on board and, and do something i was i was helpless so buddy boats that brings us to number two don't stop so if you're sailing around and you see some boat coming up your way the reality is real simple don't stop moving. The number one worst thing you can do is stop moving. Getting on a boat that's moving is extremely difficult. Unless you're ATF, Steven Seagal, Adam Sandler, one of those guys. But the number one thing is don't slow down, don't stop. A lot of a lot of times people will come up and you know they're fishermen or locals or you come into an anchorage and there's a boat boy that tries to come out and help you out with your stuff and he'll tell you where to anchor and, and they'll you know try and sell you fish or try and trade with you and do things like that. You know, most of those situations are okay, but you need to be on guard a little bit. You know, and if you feel uncomfortable at all, just tell them to back off. If they don't listen, pull up your hook and go somewhere else. And that brings us to the number one thing that we do to prevent piracy. Are you ready for this? Read about it. Be prepared. Study the charts. Study the study the hot spots. Know where you're going. There are plenty of pages online, the ICCCCN or blah, 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 whatever, noon site. There's all kinds of sites online. All you have to do is Google piracy map, which you probably already have, and there's hotspots. And every place that we've been where we've run into trouble, there was an incident in that area. And these places have been around forever, so really, like, you're not going to be the first person there. And fortunately, with the internet, we have a giant map of every incident that's happened. So if you go to noon site and you go into their, their they have formalities and check-in procedures, they also have a, a incident report for that area. And you can see everything that's happened that anybody's reported. So I hope this has helped out and that you've enjoyed the video. If we said something that you didn't like, 
let us know in the comments. If we said something you did like, let us know in the comments. And if you got any ideas, hopefully this page turns into a little bit of a brainstorming thing or where everybody can share and, and learn something new. So hit the like button, put something in the comments for us, share the video, and we hope you enjoy. Don't forget, our next episode comes out and in it, we have an incident at three in the morning, scares the heck out of us. So check that out, it's coming up. Check out our other pages, our Facebook page, our Patreon page. We appreciate it, all the support helps us keep doing these videos and we'll see you next time.